I'd like to, to talk a little bit about microservices. I assume that people pretty much know what microservices are. Um, but anyway, I'd also like to commend the people that organized this. I think this is, uh, given, given the current situation, this is a very innovative way of trying to keep people up to date. So microservices have become essentially the default architectural style. That's a little bit of an overstatement. Um, but uh, uh, they're certainly very popular. Uh, but now we're starting to see a backlash. Uh, people are saying, well, you know, not so much, not so, not so micro. Um, and so what am I going to talk about first? Just I'll introduce what microservices are. Then I'll, I'll talk about why they become popular then why a backlash and then what's kind of a middle road. So microservice architecture is a collection of independently deployable processes or packages as services and they communicate only via messages. Amazon uh, promulgated this back around the turn of this century. Uh, in addition, each service is owned by exactly one team. That's important. And the teams are small. So consequently, the microservices are relatively small, hence the name. So why are they popular? Well, fundamentally, they reduce deployment time. Once you're done with your code, you want to put it into production. If you are developing a microservice, then you can deploy your service independently from the other teams uh, with some constraints. So, so there's no need to synchronize the deployment schedules. There's no need to synchronize on technologies uh, or, or on dependencies on software libraries. So each team is essentially independent. One, uh, and some of the constraints have to do with the interface and other constraints have to do with putting the, uh, the new code in, into actual production. But the deployment process uh, can be much faster with microservices. And why is there a backlash? Well, you can end up with a lot of microservices, more, more, more than a thousand if you have a reasonably sized system. And there are two problems with this. One is the, uh, defining the correct set of services is difficult. You have to divide the services in such a way that their, commun that their communication requirements are, are low. Uh, because messages take longer to send than, than, than just doing computation or, or calling a process, calling a procedure. Um, and understanding the system in its totality is, is difficult because you have a thousand things. Where did that get done? This is, gets to be reasonably complicated as well. So what's a middle ground for this? Well, you know, most systems aren't a single architectural style. Ever since we've started talking about architectural styles, which is now what thirty years, um, it's always been the case that systems are, are a, a composite of different styles. Certain portions of the system in one style, other portions of the system is in the other another style, and you need to you need to make sure that the styles are compatible in one way or another. Uh, so microservices are good for the portions of the system that change frequently. Why? because the ones that change frequently will be deployed frequently. And so if you have frequently de frequent deployments, um, then uh, the fact that deployment is fast is a good thing. But there, there are, other, there are other, service, other services that aren't going to change very much. You, know, you have a set of core services that uh, aren't going to be modified or even some set of uh, uh, of services that live in a, in a larger context uh, that aren't going to be deployed so frequently. And you could have services that are uh, bigger than microservices for, for those portions of the system. And so then that becomes a design problem. Right? What, what changes do we expect? How, how do we isolate those changes into particular services? And, and how do we, and for the rest of it, you know, we, we might come up with a different uh, division of responsibilities. And this is a problem that, that uh, the field has been dealing with, again, for uh, uh, more than 30 years now, for 50 years, in terms of modifiability. 
but uh, it's still a relevant problem and it's still uh, something that, that you need to do as an architect and as a designer. So this is, you know, I was told to keep this short, so this is short. Uh, so, so if you want uh, more information, uh, there's a book that I wrote called Deployment and Operations for Software Engineering, for Software Engineers. Um, and then there are a couple of recent blog posts um, that uh, talk about uh, some, some of the backlash.